for me, there was a tremendous opportunity in looking at the Bergdorf's business to really ensure that we were creating a channelless vision for the brand. So by that, I mean, it's this combination of saying we have an incredible iconic store that is a destination in the city, arguably kind of the remaining luxury destination in the city. Mm -hmm. And then this opportunity to ensure that the digital experience, so our website introducing an app experience, was able to actually reflect the brand in a native way, but consistent with the way that we are, express ourselves in the store. So by that, I mean, you know, people talk about Bergdorf's windows quite frequently. It's an escapist experience, it's inspirational, it's storytelling. And so we were not translating that historically to the web experience. And so over the last few months, we've launched an entirely new experience, our first app, that is really beginning to ensure that across our physical and digital experiences, we're finding ways to really storytell across the board. And then to me, the the other largest asset that sort of remains in our organization is our selling team. And so the selling that we do is not just transactional, it's not just ringing the register, it's mm -hmm. building relationships and styling customers to make them feel good and have these experiences. So, so the thing is, is that when you are focused heavily on the online experience, mm -hmm. for example, that obviously is gonna draw in younger clientele. How do you do that? How do you focus on uh, the younger sort of future generation clientele of, of Bergdorf Goodman that it needs to modernize and survive without alienating your traditional customers? So I'm less focused on age and demographics and far more focused on psychographics. So by that I mean, this is about serving a customer that loves luxury. And mm -hmm. I think one of the things that I've observed is that oftentimes people are focused on trying to be all things to everyone. Mm -hmm. And I'm comfortable saying our goal is to be the destination for luxury. And with that, it's serving any customer that wants to be part of that, that has the shared taste for life, that wants to be part Regardless of a community. Regardless of age. That's right. not about age, it's actually about a love of a luxury experience. What needs to change in retail um, and elsewhere when it comes to um, various industries in terms of having more people like you, more women, more younger people running these large organizations? So. Women in leadership, I think, is a really interesting topic. I think it's one that's near and dear to me. But in reality, there's a, a friend has recently brought up a topic to me that has stuck with me a lot. And it's this idea of um, the need for women to help other women in that process. And so there is not a great playbook for women at sea level roles that exists out there today. And so I think the more that we can say, how can I help, is something that um, a, a friend of ours actually um, has shared that phrase with me in a way that's been really compelling to me. The need to really say, how do we help other leaders and how do we just offer up that help as a place to start? Um, I also think it's an, an, an aspect of leading by example. So mm -hmm. I've had a couple of really incredible mentors in my career mm -hmm. um, who have been women paving the way for that. And I think some of my, my favorite aspects of their leadership have been the ideas of drawing on what are sort of considered typically female uh, characteristics that I think are becoming more and more important today. So thinking about grace and wisdom and empathy as powerful leadership qualities, I think is where the industry is going today, where leadership is going today, and something that I think can harness a lot of strength of yeah. women in that process.